Ready when you are. Hello, Trent. How are you? Hey, what's going on? Can you uh, fill me in and all of us on, on how your elbow's doing? If, did you practice today with the brace on? And just what, what are your uh, limitations or feelings about everything? Um, the elbow's doing good. Um, it's made a, um, a lot of improvement over the past week or so. Um, yeah, I practiced today. Felt, felt pretty good. Um, you know, I chose to go with the tape. I'm not a huge fan of the brace, so, um, you know, I went with the tape today, but everything feels feels pretty good. Hey, Trent, how, how did you hurt the elbow, and how close did you think you were to, to being able to, to go last week? Um, I knew going last week was a bit of a shot in the dark, um, you know, but I, I just, you know, obviously with the season being where it was, I just... I couldn't give, you know, I couldn't give up on myself early in the week, so I just thought I'd give it to the very last second to see if I could, um, you know, make any breakthroughs or or get get any better um, to see if I could push through it. You know, I did that, and um, it didn't work. But we kind of knew that, though. That was kind of a we knew that one week of rest was probably not enough, and just I just prayed that we can get a second week in, and and we were able to. Uh, so, but I, I heard it um, on the sixth play in the, in the Houston Texan game. Uh, yeah, so I just kind of I labored through it. You know, I labored through it. I got it done, and you know, eventually when we had the game in hand, they let me come out. Uh, but you know, same thing with with that game. You know, I knew that game was too important for me to pull out at that time. And you know, and during on the sixth play of the game, we still were kind of you know trying to find our way. So you know. Um, I definitely didn't think it was a good time for me to miss any time. So I just gritted through it, and, um, you know, I paid the price later. Uh, Trent, w will that require surgery? And the other part is, can you take us through Sunday? Like, what was it like for you to watch that game and, and be on the sideline and be in the locker room and, and just root those guys on? What, did, what was that perspective for you? Oh, yeah, first off, um, no, I, it won't require surgery. It was something that – um, there's a non-surgical approach, and uh, so I think that's probably what, what you know, we lean on taking. Um, but, yeah, watching the game from the sideline was extremely tough. It was, you see I lost my voice. <laughs> um, still hadn't got it back, you know, full effect yet. But, yeah, it was tough, man. I just felt – I felt um, – a piece of me felt uh, – felt, I felt bad. I felt like I let my team down, um, even though I knew there was – you know, me trying to go out there and play under that condition where I could barely use my my dominant hand, my right hand. Um, you know, I didn't I didn't think me with with one good hand was better than Colt with two. So I had to to make a, a you know a a decision that went against my pride and just had to kind of you know succumb to what to the injury and just you know had to give it its time to heal. Um, but you know, coach, have, not coaching it, but playing in front of the sideline, just trying to give tips and, and affect the game any way possible just by helping my guys out. I mean, it was nerve-wracking. It's something that I definitely don't want to do, especially in a high-stakes game like that. I, I I can't see myself doing that again. Not only the roller coaster of being on the sidelines, but the roller coaster of that game was a crazy one. How did you manage your emotions during all of that? Uh. <laughs> I mean, it was tough, man. It was tough. Like, obviously going down 17-0, uh, you know, me, I think I took a lot of it personally because I thought that, you know, if I didn't have this stupid injury, I could be out there helping helping my team and, and putting us in a better position, not knowing if I would even made a difference, you know, at that time. But that's just how I felt. It sucked, you know, um, sitting nursing an injury and watching your brothers and stuff fight for, for, for the season. Um, and then – when it's not going that well, obviously I'm. It's easier as a player because you you know you know that there are ups and downs that come with the game, and you try to fly fly at a you know certain level. You don't get too high, don't get too low. But when, when you're not in the game, you know you get you get to worry. I, I worried going down 17-0. I thought our season was pretty much over, and then um, you know like you said, a roller coaster. We we ran we rode a high all the way to get back to. You know, 17 up, and then we driving looks promising, and we, you know, we have a mishap down in the red zone that 
gives them life again, kind of gives them the momentum. They take advantage. They score, you know. And we going down. It's down seven. We got to drive the length of the field and get a touchdown to keep the game less than two minutes left. And we give up a sack on third, you know, third down. Yeah, I, I think at that point, me, like I thought, like a lot of fans thought, that, that our season was pretty much coming to an end. Um, you know, I was – I knew that there was some hope because we had three timeouts and our defense was really stiff against the run. I didn't expect – um, the Rams to try to throw the ball at all, you know, trying to run the clock out. So, um, you know, I knew there was a flicker of hope, but, yeah, that that was probably the lowest point of the game. And then, obviously, it was followed by an uh, outstanding job, by uh, drive by Jimmy and the boys, and followed up by another drive, you know, that Jimmy was at the helm of and led the team down for the game-winning, the game-winning field goal. So, yeah, it was definitely a lot of emotions, but – um, you know, it's some, definitely not not anything I want to relive anytime soon. Trent, just, you know, George mentioned it. This is only this, the third time you're going to be in the playoffs. Uh, I mean, just what is that like given how, you know, how long and accomplished your career has been, but, you know, limited experience in the playoffs. What's what's it like just being here and getting another shot? Um, it, It's different. You know, I think last time I was in the playoffs was 2016, so the 2015 season really. So, uh, you know, literally, but six years ago, you know, so that's a that's twice the the <laughs> twice the the career length of the average NFL player. So, it, I don't even remember what it was like in 2016. I'm gonna be honest with you, I, I don't remember how I felt, you know, around the building, how the vibe was. But I know now the vibe is is amazing. You know, the the sun shining brighter it seems like, you know, you wake up. The day the day starts out nicer. It just you know having that having that that vibe and knowing that you know we did what half of the league you know half of the league is already enjoying the off season, and then there's another half of the teams that you know that took care of business during the season that gets to play for something more, and to know that you're a part of that bunch, um, you know it's definitely it definitely breeds confidence in the organization. But you know. It, it, it allows you to, to to take a step back and look at the hard work. I mean, we us as a team, we've overcame a lot, you know, in this whole season. We've played the best competition the NFL has to offer. Um, you know, we've been through ups and downs. We've played games without our quarterback. We played games with without you know the best tight end in the NFL. We, you know, we we've been we've been through the ringer. So um, to me, I think it's it's so gratifying to know that we're still here. And we're still fighting it to know that, that there's really there's literally not a fight that we hadn't seen and and, and um, you know, so this team is I think has enough grit, has enough resolve to, to do anything we want to do. What are the challenges that the, the guys, specifically the guys you'll be up against on that, uh, as far as the edge rushers for the Cowboys, what what are the challenges that they present you? Oh man, I mean they they want you know that that three that that rush tandem eleven ninety four and ninety, um, you know that three of the best in the league. When you look at one one group, I think that's one of the most concentrated group of rushers and and more dynamic group of rushers. Um, I think that makes that defense go. Personally, if you look at the at them at them throughout the year, they they all get it started up front. It all starts up front. Um, I think ninety four is having a breakout year. Um, I've always thought he's a pretty talented guy. I think um, now there's there's not as many people in, in, in front of him. And, um, you know, I think he's showing the league what he really can do. I think he's really he's really setting it on fire as opposed to what he can do in the pass rush game and how hard he plays. And, you know, obviously we all know what 11's been doing and we've all seen what 90's done his whole career. So um, those guys present a huge challenge. It's not – Definitely not going to be easy. It's one of the things we just can't play into their hands and, and um, you know, have to get into a drop-back game. Hey, uh, Trent, um, you mentioned the, the drives Jimmy led at the end of the game and then in overtime. And, you know, he's had quite a few of those those moments this year, a lot, a lot recently, actually, uh, even Tennessee when you guys didn't win. Uh, you know, with the bum thumb and everything. He, you didn't obviously get to see him play much last year but has he shown you this year anything more like hey i i respected that guy but i didn't quite know he had that this this in him if that makes sense 
No, I, I never questioned what he had. I mean, I came here looking at Jimmy as a Super Bowl quarterback. He took his team to the Super Bowl. Um, I don't care how good your defense is, how good your run game is, and the quarterback still has the biggest job on the football field. And if, if your quarterback's not getting it done, the team won't get it done. I don't. It don't matter how big a sample size his job has to be. Um, if he don't get it done, the team don't get it done. So um, I've always ha- held Jimmy with the highest form of respect because I know he's a winning quarterback. And winning games in this league is extremely tough. No matter how, how good the surrounding group of guys around you are, you know, when you're willing to deal in that football, that's that's a, you know, a lot of times it's a one-man job. And a lot of times a couple inches right, a couple inches left can can turn can uh, result in a turnover. Um, so the, their job is very tedious. It's very intricate. It's very detailed. So the fact that he, you know, had his team undefeated for the majority of that 19 season, then he followed that up and still took his team to the Super Bowl. Um, I've I've always had the highest level of confidence in him. Got time for three more guys? Hey Trent, uh, just kind of drawing from your uh, Texas roots. What what does it mean? To, to be playing in Texas and going against the Cowboys and just whatever extra motivation that is for you? Uh, you know, honestly, I, I don't really get a lot of extra motivation from it anymore. Yeah, I think I went to Oklahoma, so it was always a rivalry coming back, playing the long, Longhorns and playing them in Dallas and then going to the Washington, you know, football team and playing them twice a year and then being such a division rival. You know, that, that kind of – that little juice, the extra juice you get it going back home, you know, that 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 kind of like played out a few a few years back. Uh, but you know, it, it's all it always feels good to go to Jerry's World, you know, go to Texas, which is and I believe is like the mecca of football, um, you know, and and be one of the biggest shows on turf. You know, come Sunday, I think, you know, everybody's going to be tuning in. This this is a, you know, a classic matchup where you know it's literally can go either way. So. Um, you know, I think being in a game like that in an atmosphere like Texas, I think that's that gets me juiced up. But it's not, it's not that I'm coming back home and have some type of, you know, grudge against a, a Dallas Cowboy team or anything like that. Trent, uh, Kyle said yesterday that he thinks Jawan Jennings plays 95% blacked out, and he obviously looks like he's having so much fun out there. What does that bring to the offense? And, and just a reminder that it that it is a game where you're having fun. Uh, for me, it brings – I know for me and myself, just being a guy 12th year, um, it's, it energizes you. When you see that type of raw emotion, you see somebody who literally is like – you know, J- Jawan is only in his second year. It's really his first year. He spent a lot of the year hurt last year. But, you know, to see him living out his dreams and to see that it really means a lot to him. He doesn't take it for granted. He doesn't – not one of those guys that wake up and say, I'm supposed to be here. I deserve to be here. He works every day for his for his spot. He's worked up the depth chart. He's worked up the roster. I mean, he he has a um, a very infectious type of energy that he brings to the huddle, that he brings to the locker room. Um, so me, I get you know, I get a it, it kind of re- recenters me a little bit to say you know I'm I'm so far removed of, of accomplishing my dream. You know that that now is is work, and and now to see somebody who's still kind of in that honeymoon period of, of accomplishing their their dreams, um, I think it's refreshing for me. You know, I, I love to see it. I think he's a guy that when you put that much passion in, and and you care that much about what you do, um, I honestly feel like the sky's the limit for him. Last one, Josh. Go ahead. Hey Trent, the uh, All Pro team's coming out tomorrow. What would it mean to you if actually? the things you've gone through if you were to make that team? Uh, I, think, I think it'll feel good, finally. You know, um, it sucks because I can't let it define my career because I've never made it. So if that, if I if I felt like, you know, that's what I needed to define my career, then, then you know, anything I've done up to now is really hogwash in my opinion. So, I mean, I, I it, it'll definitely feel good to, to get a notch if that happens. But, um, you know, at, at this point, um, you know, I'm not putting a whole lot of a whole lot of time into it or not, not a lot of not a lot of thought going into it. You know, if I make it, I make it. I've been disappointed year after year after year. So it's really come to a point where I'm, I'm almost numb to it. You know, like, 
yeah, I, w- I would love to make it, but I'm not looking forward to it. I'm not – I didn't even know when it was coming out just because, you know, I'm so used to getting that disappointment. So I just – if it happens, it happens. And I'll, I'll thank God and keep moving. All right. Thank you, guys. Right. Hey. Hey there. Whoa, hey there. Howdy. How we doing? Fantastic. Hey, w- how do the, the Cowboys compare just uh, athletic-wise, physicality-wise – uh, what they do to some of the teams you faced? Uh, you're talking about all over the ball, offense, defense. I mean, they uh, they got stars all over the field. Uh, I mean, I've I love watching Dallas film. I think their offense is incredibly fun to watch from their wide receivers. Ezekiel Elliott, I've always enjoyed watching him. Uh, the running back behind Ezekiel is incredible. He's fast, he's runs through tackles. Dak Prescott's pretty good at football. They've got an un- unreal O line. Um, they've got athletes all over the field, and then. On defense, I think they've got a fantastic D-line. Um, Parsons is a physical, fast guy. I'm excited to play against him. A um, uh, friend of Van Der Esch, I've been looking forward to playing him because I didn't get to play him last year. So, I'm, And then uh, I got Lawrence and Gregory. I mean, they got stars and athletes all over the field that know how to play football, and they love playing football. So, I mean, it's a really good team, and I'm looking forward to getting an, uh, an opportunity to play against them. George, first of all, can you tell us a little bit about your shirt? And then the second question uh, is about Juwan Jennings, but first about your shirt. Oh, just my Debo shirt. Actually, I, I honestly just took it from his locker on my way in here because I wanted to rep my Debo guy. Are you wearing a mask on a Zoom call? That's aggressive. I'm at the airport. I don't feel safe now, but I'll put one on too if I had one. Um, uh, my Debo shirt, I mean, <laughs> you, hey, you got to tuck your chains. You play with the mindset of Debo and you're going to have a good day. What was your other question? My other question was, uh, Jimmy was saying yesterday about Juwan Jennings. He's the life of the party in the locker room, but then once he's on the field, he's locked in. And that sounds somewhat similar to, to how you play football. Is that something you guys have talked about? Have you ever given any tips on that? Uh, yes and no. Uh, Juwan's kind of a guy that um, you just got to let Juwan be Juwan, and he's going to show up. You guys got to trust that he's responsible enough to do whatever he needs to do, and he's going to show up and play at a high level, which he does. I've never once worried about Juwan. I mean, uh, he always shows up and he always, you know, performs on every practice. Um, I don't really, you don't really have to have too many conversations with him because you can tell how much he loves the game. Um, but yeah, he definitely has a lot of fun in the locker room. But when he goes out there, he's out there to, uh, you, know, you know, earn the respect of his teammates, which is what you want in a football player. George, we saw you out there with Trent Williams today. How much does it mean for your offense to get him back in the lineup for Sunday, possibly? Uh, I mean, he's the best football player I've ever played with, so... It's very helpful. Uh, huge Trent Williams fan. Love playing with him. Love blocking with him. He makes my life a lot easier. Um, he makes everybody's life a lot easier. You can ask him to block two guys, and he'll do it with ease. Um, I mean, uh, Trent, like, a little bit hurt is still better than I think almost everybody in the NFL, regardless of position. Um, so having him back is a huge impact for us and will allow us to do um, a lot more things in the running, uh, running pass game. Uh, George, the Cowboys obviously have uh, like a trio of, of pretty good pass rushers and a, looks like a, a, a elite cornerback. Are they in some ways similar, you know, personnel-wise to what you see from the Rams? Um, kind of. It's a little bit different just because, um, I mean, I think Aaron Donald is one of the best defensive players like I've ever seen I get a go against weekly. Um, you know, nothing against the Cowboys guys. They don't have Aaron Donald in the middle. Uh, and, and that's no offense to anybody, just the way that it is. But, yeah, I mean, their edge guys are elite. The way that they set them all up and they like they do all their stunts uh, with 90, 93, and 11, um, they're, they're really good at those stunts. They hit them fast. Uh, if you think twice, they're already past you. I mean, that's why they have so many sacks, so many forced fumbles, so many strip sacks. And that's how they make all the pressure to be leading the league in interceptions just because that D-line uh, just adds all that pressure and QB's got to get rid of it so fast. So. You definitely got to be on your toes. Got to be really aware, uh, you know, of everything going on around you, and you just got to really account for those guys. And uh, you know, give Jimmy some time in there, and he'll be able to drop some dimes. Georgia, after the Super Bowl, there was that video that came out that, that showed you talking in, <laughs> about you, you would be back. You were vowing to get back to the Super Bowl. Uh, obviously, it's a year later than you would have liked, but being back in the postseason, um, how, what did you learn from your last? postseason run that maybe can help you this time around um i mean this time around is i think completely different than what we did last time last time we were sent at a one seed with a bye getting a week of our bodies right watching other teams play football 
Um, and now we're on the road, guaranteed almost uh, for the next uh, three games. We want to get back to where we want to go. So I mean, definitely a little bit of a different mindset. But um, no, I think one of the best things I you know learned from the playoffs last time, um, especially you know my my tight end coach John Embry was always he we talked about just last week was I got to play my fourth postseason game, which is more than Tony Gonzalez ever got to play in in like 17 years. And so Trent Williams has played in two in his whole career. Alex Mack, I think is at four, maybe more, maybe five. And so you just, you never know when you're going to get the opportunity. Um, I think, yeah, Alex Mack said he hadn't played in a postseason game until year eight. And so the fact that I get to play him in my second postseason year five, uh, every single snap matters. It doesn't matter if you're on the backside of the run, front side, you're on the backside of a pass. It doesn't really matter what your role is. You have to do it the best of your ability, every single snap. Because you don't know if you're going to get another one. Um, you know, if you lose that game, you don't. You're not. There's no guarantees that you're going to be back the next year. Um, so many things can happen. I mean, that happened to us last year. You know, we thought we had a great team going into it, and all of a sudden we had 45 guys on IR. It felt like, and we're in a position now where uh, we have guys healthy. We have guys coming back. Um, I think our offense is hitting a little bit of a stride here. Guys are playing at a high level, and our defense looks pretty damn good. So, um, you know, we just got to keep this thing rolling and take advantage of every single snap that we have. We'll do two more for George, please. George, as far as Tom Compton, uh, you know, you're looking back and Mike McGlinchey was having such a good year. And, you know, I, I don't want to say it's a surprise given that Compton's been around for a while. He's a veteran, but he's been a guard most of his career. I mean, why has he been so effective switching from tackle? And, and were you surprised at all by it? I mean, what's just your impression of how well he's played this season? It's actually crazy because Tom was on – Let's see, he's been on like five teams now in the last three, like before last year, he was on three different teams in three years. It's like they were trying to get rid of him. And, you know, all I needed was a team to give him a chance at a position that he excelled at. And especially in an offense that uh, he's really good at. He's good at outside zone. Uh, he's good at, you know, our, you know, our uh, pass pro stuff. But we put him into an office where he, an offense where he can excel at. You know, we don't ask him to do things he doesn't need to do. And then on top of that, Tom's an extremely hard worker. He shows up. He's one of the first guys in every single day. Takes care of his body. Takes care of his business. Um, and he also he's a good leader. Uh, I know he doesn't talk a lot, but he, he's a solid guy in the huddle. Like you, you see him, and he's a guy that you want to lean on too. And you know, Tom's been nothing but incredible for us. You know, ever since I've met Tom, uh, he's been awesome. Uh, he's been a leader for us. Um, I, you know, right when Mike went down, Tom, you know, he stepped up in a big way. Uh, it was fun to play along with him. It's been fun to really get to know him and play alongside him this entire year. Uh, we have a lot of great triple blocks, a lot of combo stuff. He's good to communicate with out there, and he's always on the same page with the tight ends, which is something I really appreciate. And I think he's only gotten better week to week. Uh, really has. I think he's just he's gotten much better. And if you can get better in, I think he's in year eight or nine, then you're doing something right. Oh no, he's in year ten, I think. Jeez Louise, go Tom. Hey uh, George, it, there's a saying about you got to be able to run the ball once it's in the playoffs. I, I, I'm sure some of that is is because of the weather, um, but you guys took that to an extreme two years ago. Is there anything to it? I, I mean, just besides the weather, that why it's so important when it gets to the postseason, you have to be able to at least have be able to establish something of a, ra a ground game. I don't know how much the weather is going to affect the dome, but. but um, yeah, I don't think it's going to be a factor uh, Sunday. Um, I think the biggest thing about running the football is you just control the clock. Um, you want your defense to have as much break as it possibly can. You want their offense to not be on the field scoring points. So if you can control the clock by running the football, gaining yards, having multiple first downs, you know, not, you just can't have three and outs. So if you can run the ball effectively, get a bunch of third and shorts or no third downs at all, go up and down the field, a couple 12-play drives, 15-play drives. Next thing you know, it's the second half, and you might be up a score or two, and that's all you want to do. Run the football, be physical, set the tone, and have fun doing it. Last hey, one. listen, Jer Jerry could open up the windows in the dome, but it's going to be 51, so I don't see that happening here. Uh, quick question for you. You talked about playing a guy like Aaron Donald. What stands out to you about Micah Parsons? He's lined up at safety, corner, he rushes the passer, and obviously don't have tape on him from last week. When you look at the tape that you have seen, what stands out about him as an offense that you have to guard against? I mean, you kind of said it. He, he can do it all. He lines up everywhere. Uh, he makes plays all over the field. Um, there's times, I mean, there's a clip versus the Giants where they tried to do some type of pick route. He fell off. It got a knockdown in the red zone. I mean, he's a smart football player. But at the same time, he's fast. He's violent. Uh, and he's very physical. You can just see all the sacks that he gets. It's just because it's his effort, his tenacity. 
Uh, he's a hell of a football player. Um, but you can see the effort in there too. Um, he's not just, he doesn't rely on his athletic talent. You can kind of, you can tell that he knows what he's doing. He's out there. He's going against guys. He knows what their techniques are. And then at the end of the day, he's just, yeah, I mean, he's given that high motor, high effort, and it allows him to get those sacks, allows him to get those, you know, those sat, uh, the knockdowns, the forced fumbles. He's just a really good football player. And you can tell uh, just by watching the tape, he jumps off the tape at you, even though it's silent. And if you have a football player like that, he's got a chance to be great. Thank you, George. See you guys. Tuck your chain. Hey, Nick. Uh, I think in the last four games, you guys as a team have 15 sacks, um, which is which is quite good. You only have one and a half of them, which I don't say to bang on you, but just seems to be a reflection of maybe you guys just doing a better job if teams are going to devote a lot of resources to you to making them pay. Obviously, you'd probably want to have 15 sacks, but um, – I don't know, is there truth in that, that you guys late in the season have, uh, is that a reflection of, of you guys figuring some things out, um, uh, how to defeat teams if they're going to do that to you? Yeah, I think everybody's starting to play really well uh, around. Um, everybody's winning their one-on-one -on -one matchups and, and getting comfortable out there. And um it definitely shows that you can't really double team anybody because somebody will get there. Nick, as you're watching the Cowboys film, what does Tyron Smith and Lyle Collins, what did they do that was going to be a challenge for you? And not that you can compare one of them to Trent Williams, but how do they kind of stack up in left tackles? Um, I think they're both very solid players um obviously tyron's had a hall of fame career i think um and he him and trent have been the best tackles in the league for a long time uh but um they're definitely beatable uh there's there's tape on on them getting beat and uh we're trying to do the same um, but they've definitely been in and out of the lineup a lot this year in the past years. So, um, just game plan is to make them work. Nick, um, what does this mean to you being back in the playoffs? And I mean, do the memories of the Super Bowl are they still fresh in your mind? And just um, how much do you want to put this this game and, and just dominate it? Um, yeah, I'm definitely very excited for this one. Um, there's definitely a different uh, just energy and vibe once you get here and it's winter go home. And it was kind of that last week, but it's different um, now. And um, we just want to win and keep going because this group is really special and, and we want to accomplish special things. Nick, kind of following up on that, uh, I know I realize it's different circumstances. You're not going to be at home the whole time, number one seed and all that this time around. But uh, what did you learn from your first playoff experiences that you think can maybe help you uh, this time? Um, definitely learned that it's it's football. It's the same game we're playing. It's just really good teams. Um, and there's no room for error or you'll be sent home. Um, so, but I, also good defense and running the ball helps you win in the playoffs. So we have those things and we're hoping that um, it could lead us in the right direction. Hey, Nick, so many of our questions to you have to do with the, the pass rush and, and uh, you know, putting pressure on the quarterback, but your guys' run defense has been pretty exceptional over the last half of the season. Um, how much pride do you take in that? And it, how big is is just how you've been able to, to bottle up teams in the run game? How much has that translated over to the success rushing the passer? It definitely goes hand in hand. Um, I think we're stopping a run, stopping the run at a incredible rate this year. Um, I don't know if the numbers say it, but it's it feels a lot better than 19 um, run stopping wise. 
Um, and that just gives you so many more opportunities on second and third down to, to, to get to the quarterback. And um, it's definitely a testament to uh, the interior guys, Eric, DJ, Street, Kevin, um, getting Mo back. Um, they're just playing at an extremely high level, all four of them. And, um, and then Samson is setting edges really well. Uh, he's really got a hang of this scheme and Arden too. Um, so everybody's really playing well. And yeah, Nick, to get a, um, a manual back last week, to get Greenlaw back, it looks like Aziz may be coming back. Does this look like a defense that's peaking to you at the right time? Definitely, yeah. I think with our three linebackers back and um, the guys in the secondary, uh, having a manual back is is as big as any um, person you could add to the team. Uh, then we get Trent back, too, on offense, so it's definitely coming together. Hey, what has stands out to you about Dak Prescott when you look at the tape? Um, he's tough. He's he's stout in the pocket. It isn't easy to bring down, and and he's good under pressure. Uh, I see him complete a lot of balls while he's getting while well, guys are flashing in his face or while he's getting hit. He's uh he's poised for sure. And Nick, this could just be a, a media thing, yeah, but enough. when you guys lost to the um, Cardinals at home, uh, that obviously, you know, the defense, it just did not look at, at all right. And a lot of guys said it wasn't up to your standard. Did that do anything? Like, was that like a rock bottom? Was that in any way a meaningful moment uh, this season, or was it just a bad game? I think it was. Uh, I'm not gonna say it's it was the pivotal moment in our season but wasn't that before the rams game uh but then we lost another one after that um so <laughs> i don't know i think it was just a bad game honestly <laughs> what kind of relationship do you have with ezekiel elliott still given that your brother and him were obviously roommates in college and still remain close and what can you tell this defense about Zeke and his run style specifically? Um, I keep in touch with Zeke a little bit. Uh, obviously, we're both busy, but um, I love Zeke, and uh, I, I remember hanging out with him and Joey when I would come visit uh, when I was in high school, and they were a lot of fun. Uh, but I think whatever I could tell my, the defense about him, they already know. They see it on film. So he's a really good player, and we're going to have our hands full. All right. Thank you, Nick. Ready when you are? Jordan, with, with all the success you've had recently uh, in the past couple months, actually, have you noticed uh, offenses blocking you any different, paying more attention to you? Have you noticed that you know you're kind of getting the respect that that your play is warranted? Oh yeah, I'm definitely getting the respect. Um, all of us as a D line is getting the respect. Um, they they doing whatever they can to block Bosa. Whether they can put three, four, five, six, you know, however many on him. And um, then they choose to slide the line away to get the other three rushes. So it's a lot. It, um, I guess I would say Tennessee Titans, we did a lot on empty chip, chippers, what to run against those type things. Because uh, that, that was pretty much our first time actually seeing that as much in the season. So we've been working hard to try to defeat those uh, blocking schemes. Arden, just going back to, to when you came here, you talked about sort of being frustrated that you were not used probably the way you wanted to be uh, with the Raiders. It, it looked like at the start of training camp, Chris Kacerik, I, I wouldn't say frustrated, but it looked like he was really trying to get the most out of you. What has he done to be able to to make you comfortable and, and to get you playing the way you are right now? Uh, 
him being him. Um, no, I don't think nothing really ever changed with him over the years of him coaching. I say he probably calmed down a lot. Um. Uh, talking to other players, but he just demanding the best from you every day. He want the best for everybody, um, and that's from practice squad guys all the way up to the the guy. Um, and he want the same for everybody. He want everybody to be better, everybody to reach their full potential. Um, and he give a, and he's the same every day, and that's what I respect about him. Arden, going back to that, you were so happy to land at the 49ers after years of not being happy with the Raiders. Has it lived up to your expectations? Has everything gone according to plan, or is it even better than you thought it might be? It's exceeded. It's exceeded my expectations. Um, it's different. I, what, what, I, what, I, what I would say, I say I expect it, everything, but it's, it's different when you expect it and then when you actually live in, in the reality of it. Um, and you're just seeing it work, going to work every day. And you don't, you don't pretty much see it till you actually get the success. And you see the success in us as a D-line, the hard work we put in from OTAs, the training camp, to to this point. Now, um, we put we put the work in. We put a lot of work in, a lot of sweat, a lot of tears. And now we're seeing the fruits of our labor. Arden, you mentioned the Tennessee game. I think you said empty chippers can you just educate us a, a little bit about um why that game was different what empty chippers are and, and how you guys have gotten better dealing with that well empty chippers empty chippers would be you just have the quarterback and you might have a running back or a tight end and you have them a little bit behind the offensive tackles um and their they, their responsibility is to chip the edges and then you have the guard both guards in the center and they, they their responsibility is for the inside guys, the uh, two inside guys. So when you got that, you can have two ends rushing on the outside, and you have the that tight end or running back or that empty chipper and that tackle both on you. And then now you have the inside guy where you have the guard and the center, and you might have one on one one on one rush within it within it, depending on how everything go when the pre, when the play go. But nine times out of ten, you have. What uh six on four, so that's that's why it's empty chipper, and that's that's the hard part because you got six on four, so you gotta figure out what what rush you can get to have somebody who win the one on one or two one on ones. Or then you got a, you got a locker room full of teammates who were around for the Super Bowl run in 2019. As one of the guys who's who's new to the team this year, how much of a sense do you get going into this postseason that there's kind of that unfinished business uh, amongst your teammates? Um, I've been here. We've been here in that since OTA training camp. But I think this it's just a um. Well, I said that's the culture around here. Everybody want they want to get they want to get to the uh, championship every year. Every they they want to do it every year. And um, I say I say we like to do it the dirty way. Um, the dirty way, the hard way. Uh, I don't know why sometimes. I be getting mad. I be getting mad. Sometimes we should just be blowing people off out of the water, but some we just make it hard on ourselves sometimes. But that's the that's the culture around here. Getting to the big ship every year, and it's just another year. Yeah, Arden, when you were, when you came out in the draft, and people looked at your height and your length and your your speed, and they got and you know it was projected. This is this is a classic edge guy. But are you a I don't know, surprised, pleasantly surprised that so much of your damage is coming inside? And is that something you expected when you came out of college? I ain't expected coming out of college. Uh, definitely didn't. Um, not su- not surprised because it was an easy transition because I, I, I played inside. I played all across the line since the start of my football career. Um, I played a little bit inside during college. Um, so I had a little bit, little bit of uh, experience there, starting there, um, and then every year, my my rookie year, I played inside a little bit. My sophomore year, I played a lot. I played more than my rookie year inside. Um, so ever since I've been in the league, I've been getting reps inside. This will be the most reps I've gotten inside, and and I'm I'm liking it. I'm loving it. <laughs> Well, while you're inside, Nick Bosa is still on the outside. So I'm just kind of curious, what is Bosa's mindset this week? Um, like at, at some point, it seems like he's going to break loose eventually and get like a three sack game, and it's a one here, one there, one here, one there. It, do you see like he's pent up, ready to go? <laughs> That's every week uh, with Bosa. And one thing I'm surprised with Nick Bosa ain't he? He has not came to the sideline crying. Or complaining about, oh, they chipping me, or oh, this, that, and the third. 
Um, when we get a sack, you see him. He might be on the ground. He might have three people on him, but you see his hands go up because he's happy for his brothers. Um, we all brothers. Um, he we we happy for him when he get the sack. Um, when he got that sack, uh, last game came to the sideline. I told him, "Welcome back." Uh, we just joke with each other um all the time, but you no, know, Nick, Nick. It's the same guy every week. It don't matter who he playing, who who coming into town, who who town we going into. He gonna be the same guy. He going to get that quarterback. Hey, Arden, one of your your defensive teammates recently said that you've been making some money this year, and I, you know obviously you came to the 49ers on a one year deal, kind of a prove it deal. How big of a priority is it for you uh, as you look ahead, you know, to try to stay here, but also knowing that you've played so well. That I mean, there's a chance that maybe you priced yourself out of the 49ers market. Man, I love you here. Um, we, we we I'm not thinking about contract talk. We're not we're not. I'm not having no contract talk. Nothing. Everything will be after the season. Um, we just here enjoying enjoying every moment right now. Cause like I said, this is really a brotherhood over here. Like we are not. Oh my! About to cuss. No cap in our rap. That's what they say. No cap in our rap. A lot of teams say, "Oh yeah, we care one another. We want to do. We want to see everybody successful and everything like that." But we really mean it over here, and it's really a brotherhood. And I don't want it to end. We don't want it to end. So we we taking it day by day, bringing it all in, and let the chips fall wherever they may. Last one. Hey, Arden, of your guys' last fifteen sacks, only one and a half has has been by Bosa. That's not to knock Bosa, but the, the point is, you know, as you've been saying, there's all this attention on him and it's allowing freeing other guys up. That wasn't always the case early in the season. Did you guys feel pressure or feel like, hey, we just got to do better if they're going to put all this attention on Bosa? It's up to us to, to get this done? Yeah, I mean, um, I guess once they started, so because Bosa came, Bosa started off so, so fast. I guess once they really started to put all the attention on on Bosa. That's when we start rushing better. We start rushing better as a group. Uh, everything just happened like right on time. It wasn't. It, it wasn't like I, I know. I, I'm, I'm 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 mad that I'm mentioning Oakland or the Raiders, but it it kind of take time once you try to figure out whatever. But here it just. I don't know. Everything just happened right when it was supposed to. So it wasn't like, oh, man, we're not playing as good for like five, six, seven weeks. Now we got to try to change it. It was just something that just happened, I guess. It just happened. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank y'all. Hey, Faithful. Click here to subscribe.